Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GADNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I sing. Hey, Alex Bennett here. The ramble is on the air. We'll uh, try to assemble a citizen's panel about uh, 25 minutes from right now. But in the meantime, we are going to go talk to an old friend as we like to do once a week. Larry Bubbles Brown is a very vexing human being. How do you like being vexing? Um, yes, it sounds good. Yeah, vexing because, uh, among other things, he's a complete Luddite. I am talking to him on the telephone, which, by the way, sounds very good. Is this a cell phone you're using? This is a landline. That's a landline. You mean, uh, and it's plugged into a wall? Is that how it's that plugged thing? into a wall? They're always better. If you listen to radio, people always call it on cell phones. They they still have such crappy connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it will sell, uh, but the, I'll tell you something about the landlines that I remember is when it rained and you got some water in the lines, there would be crackling. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you remember that? A long time ago, yeah. But it doesn't happen anymore? Not for these, no. Oh, okay. Land, there's nothing stronger than the, <laughs> when, when uh, Ma Bell had the, uh, the monopoly and they had the, the phones you couldn't unplug those, <laughs> an atom bomb couldn't break those phones. Oh well, I uh, I wanted to do an ad once for the phone company when they had those phones in the old days. They, they were made out of Bakelite, I think was the was. Oh, they're the, unbelievable. They were and they were big and clunky. This is before the Princess phone and all the other phones came along, but. This was couldn't the old, unplug them, and you couldn't. Uh, they, well, so they, you, they screwed. Couldn't, uh, they screwed into the wall. They were, yeah. There were two terminals, and you would screw the phone into the wall. And you couldn't turn the ringer off. So uh, were... Right. So there was no connector. There wasn't like a plug. Hey, folks, uh, kids, you're listening? Yeah, yeah listen to Pop, History <laughs> Pops Bennett and, 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 and Uncle, <laughs> Uncle uh, Larry here. To Jebediah tell you, uh, Brown. And, uh, I, but I want to do an ad. Uh, and the ad was going to be, you remember that time... You got mad at your wife, and you ripped the phone out of the wall and threw it across the room. And then after the fight was over, you went and retrieved the phone, and there wasn't a mark on it, and you simply screwed the phone back into the uh, connector. Remember the phone worked? We're AT and T. You could take those phones. That's what everybody did when they were mad. They would rip the phone out of the wall. Yeah, because they knew there was the one thing in the house you couldn't break. And the reason you couldn't break them is AT and T didn't want a bunch of broken phones, so they made those things just rock solid, and they were heavy. Uh, Very it, heavy, yeah, like bowling balls. Now we're not talking about the ones that went before that, where you actually had the head the ha- headset piece that you put to your ear that was on a hook. You know, we're talking about just the the phone with the cradle, and you picked it up and you started talking. Mm-hmm. And then AT and T came out with the princess phone. They decided they wanted to make phones. They wanted to appeal to women to begin with. And they wanted to appeal to uh, a newer audience. So they came out with the Princess phone. It was the first departure from the old standard phone. There was just one problem with the Princess phone, and they finally fixed it. When people would dial with it, like you used to dial on the phones, right? As you dialed it, the phone would keep moving around. Right, yeah. Because it wasn't heavy enough. So they had to weight it down on the bottom so you could then dial with a princess phone. Well, you might want to explain to the kids the dial. <laughs> he didn't punch yes, the Yes, there was a you dial. Know. And you dialed. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. This was, uh, I often use this as my example of old people versus younger people. Uh, you take a younger person today and you ask them to use a digital phone and they go, okay? You ask them, 
you put them a dial phone down there and say, dial that same number using this dial phone, they have trouble. Yeah, I've heard that, yeah. They have trouble. Now, on the other hand, my mother, my mother uh, was a, um, used a dial phone all her life. And when she got, we got her a, a touch tone phone. She was, she was going one, five, six. But if you gave her the the uh, dial up phone, the you know, rotary phone, she blump 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 blump. So I mean that I I describe that as the difference in in age and how we adapt to technology and so on. Yeah, people don't like change. Well, so I I've I'm never, not alone. I've never minded change. You know, I embrace change. Yeah, you're always on the cutting edge of this stuff. But it, the point is, if the change is for good, and I predicted, you know, I was like a proponent of the future and computers and all of that. You know, you know me. You remember You me. were, yeah. Uh, and how this was going to be the wonderful world of the future. And I finally have decided that all this stuff is terrible uh, and that the Unabomber was right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, uh, because, and I'm going to tell you why, folks. You say, oh, that's just because you're old. No, it's not because I'm old. It's because I wanted this. But I, what I didn't want was identity theft and the malware and people trying to get into your computer and all the different methods of theft we have today. In the old days, you wanted to rob a bank, you had to get a gun and a gang and you went into a bank and said, everybody put your hands up, hand me all the money, and you left. Now you got to sit in Russia hacking. And uh, hacking is so much more, is so much worse than a bank robber because the bank robber has to have the guts to walk into the bank with a gun. Yeah. These and, guys uh, can sit on their couch in Russia and just hack away. So, you know, the promise of the future didn't come along with a set of, of rules. I mean, of, of uh, what could we call it, uh, the, what, uh, no, decency. You yeah, know? we lost our privacy. People found all, oh, hey, we found a new way of, of uh, screwing people out of their money or stealing, or stealing their identity. Um, and now you, you really see by being such a Luddite, don't have to worry about identity theft quite as much as I do. Yeah, I would be terrified to do banking online. Yeah. So you still go, let me get this straight, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, you go to still go to the bank. I still, in fact, <laughs> I did make an upgrade though. <laughs> I, found, I found out that you can actually deposit your check into the ATM. This was just last week. Oh, I, you just figured that one out? I used to, yeah, I used to go in and talk to you. You go in and talk to the teller, and they got this little spiel. Yeah, hey, how's your day and all that crap, which I hate. And so now my sister says, oh, no, you can actually put it in the, just go to the ATM. It'll take the check in and read it. And I, I can't do that. And it does. Oh, yeah, no, you, that's been going on for years, Larry. Well, I didn't know that. So this is I lo I I hate human contact. So this is a big help. I know, but the thing is about, and it's better than waiting in line at the bank. Yeah, you know. I had no. This is how long has this been going on? About uh, uh, ten years. Ten. Okay, <laughs> well, I had no idea. <laughs> Maybe longer. You, you know. What, <laughs> you know what though? They haven't been able to, and I, people can argue with me about this, but it, it, they've done a lot of things with banking where you can do it online. I mean, I find it amazing. You know how I deposit a check? If I get a check, and who gets a check anymore? But if I get a check, I simply pull out my iPhone, bring up my banking program, uh, click a picture of the of the check, and they deposit it. I've seen that. I still can't believe you can do that. You can do that. That way you don't have to go to the bank. But you still, if you're going to the bank, you still have to go to an ATM to get the money. There's no way they're able to, like, deliver the money <laughs> yes, over put your put greenbacks out of your iPhone. Exactly. Nobody has been able to come up with that. And uh, that's pretty uh, – that, so you still – but you, there are a lot of other ways that you can use that bank you can use your bank card at your local uh grocery store 
or whatever that's linked to your account so you don't actually have to carry cash all the time. If I want to take a cab, I use my iPhone. I have what's called Apple Pay. And I simply look at my phone because it recognizes me now, which I love because my wife doesn't, but it does. <laughs> It, rec a good it, a good it, it recognizes me. My phone me. recognizes me, but my wife doesn't. Uh, and and then uh, I I simply uh, go to my wa my uh, Apple Pay, and I bring it up, and it looks at me and says, oh, "Okay, it's you. All right. When you're ready, just hold this up to the uh, hold this up to the uh, uh, the, the reader, and it'll uh, it'll 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 pay for it." So I don't even have to use cash. So cash will be obsolete in 10 years. Uh, yeah, I mean, I find that at the end of uh, a month, I still have a lot of the cash I took out of the bank. I take out about 300 a month, and there's always 200 left because I'm either using the Apple Pay or the, or the card or whatever. So you really don't need cash. As, well, you need cash, but not everybody needs cash. But the idea that you can deposit a check just by taking a picture of it. Yeah. Know, it makes me just delighted. That's, delighted. My head popped off when I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so what's new with uh, Larry Bubbles Brown? We haven't uh, actually asked you that question. Uh, is there anything, uh, nothing exciting, just bumbling along doing stand-up. I saw your uh, old friend uh, Tom Rhodes, who said to say hi last night. Gee, Tom Rhodes. God, I haven't talked to him in years. Yeah. He became very big in where? The Netherlands or something? Holland? He had his own show in Amsterdam, yeah, for four or five years, yeah. Yeah. A lot of these guys who yeah, they, they were okay here, you know, they, they, but they didn't become big. Go to no, another he, country like Amsterdam, and he was—he had his own TV show. He was a sensation. Yeah. So why is he playing with you? Well, he's back in America. He was at the—he was at the Throckmorton last night in Mill Valley, your old home, and yeah. uh, he came out there to do a set. Yeah, but is he still it. doing stuff in Holland? Uh, no, no, he's back in LA now. So his and career dried up in Holland. That's uh, Holland is dried up. Yes, uh, you kind of have to get the feeling. I don't know. I would uh, that if I were doing my show in Holland, and all of a sudden nobody wanted my show in Holland anymore, then I was pretty well washed up because Holland is about. It's like getting a job at McDonald's. <laughs> Holland's the end of the world. <laughs> you know, if they fire you from McDonald's, that's about how you can't get any lower. You know. So, <laughs> and he had a uh, remember he had a before he went to Holland he had a uh, he had a sitcom for a year on uh, when t before TV died back in the nineties. He did have a sitcom, didn't he? Mister, it's called Mister Rhodes. He was a teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, folks, and folks don't even remember that. And I imagine that if we, um, well, let me see. I'll, I'll, I have I, IMDb here. This is something. This is something you would love if you ever got computers. I like the IMDb. I, I can go on that. And Mr. Rhodes was probably on in 90, I'm going to say 96. Mr. Rhodes. Uh, okay, Mr. Rhodes, it comes up. No, it, that's a movie. Wait, Mr. Rhodes? Oh, no. 1996? No, that would be right. Would it? That's what I thought. Well, no, it's a, that's a movie. So maybe, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let's do it, Mr. Spell Mr. out. Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes. Huh. It doesn't even come up. Well, when you get fired uh, from Holland, they take you off the IMDb. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Rhodes, and, I, and Rhodes is R-H-O-D-E-S, right? I believe so, yeah. Mr. Rhodes, okay, let me put in Tom Rhodes. <laughs> Jeez, you got to know that Tom Rhodes, actor, 
Tom Rhodes, usual suspects? No, I guess it's says Tom Rhodes. Yeah, stand-up comedian. Uh, here, here we go. Maybe the thing wasn't called Mr. Rhodes. Here it is, Mr. Rhodes. I typed that in and didn't find it initially. Uh, it lasted for 17 episodes. Which is, that's kind of a full season. Kind of, yeah, yeah. And what year was that? Uh, this was, uh, where is it? Oh, here we go, 1996 to 1997. Okay. He was a new hip writer. He has written one novel, which was critically acclaimed, but commercial failure, he must resort to teaching at a prep school. That's the plot of Mr. Rhodes. And uh, there's, I don't remember the cast, but I think the I think the guy from Barney Miller was on that show. Well, let's see here. And Ron Glass. Yeah. Ron Glass. That's yep. It. Yep. So uh, so he did. He got a series. How does that? So happen? seventeen episodes, and he's probably getting fifty grand an episode. So that was a good year. Yeah, it was a good year, and I, I think what happens is. Um, uh, uh, you know that that's probably a, mag a matter of something you and I don't really know about good agentry. Mm -hmm. You know, he got some agent that believed in him, and then he hyped him, and he got him a show, and then the show failed, and then he never could get another show in in uh, in America. So then he went to Holland. You know, on IMDb it doesn't list any of his Holland shows. I don't think. Let's see, proxy and people in the show of comedian Tom Rhodes, comedy Bang Bang. So, red light comedy live from Amsterdam. Uh, yeah. So, so that probably wasn't big money. I don't know. No, no well, I mean, uh, when I saw him, he was doing the stuff in Holland, and he, he, was very, he was very happy with it. He said, you know, it's nice to be a success there. But you know we have guys that let leave here and go to England and they can't catch cold here. But in England they love them. Like uh, Greg Proops. Greg Proops. Greg Proops, who is part, he's known here. He promotes himself a lot, mm -hmm. and he's known here. But in England he's a god. You know. He's a god. Uh, Michael, Arge Barker is big in Australia. Ar, Ar, Arge, uh, where did I see Arge? I saw him on some series or something. He was on something. He was Fly to the Concords. Fly to the Concords, yeah. Uh, but Arge Barker is big in where? Australia. So where, is that where he's living? Yeah, uh, half the year, yeah. Wow. So you see, I mean, what happens is for some reason, the comedians who don't get embraced here can go somewhere else, and all of a sudden, oh, they all love them. Um, uh, there was Michael McShane. Remember Michael McShane? Mm-hmm. Uh, he was very big in England. Did a lot of sitcoms there and everything. Over here, eh, not so much. People remember him on Seinfeld as the guy who... Uh, had the stink eye and I think uh, wished to curse on Kramer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was Michael McShane. Now everybody's going, oh yeah, I know Michael McShane. I remember that guy, you know. But uh, he went to England and did very well. Did very, very, very well. Uh, I'm thinking about a move to Albania. To yeah, yeah, Albania would, I think... <laughs> could say could save this debacle. The Bubs, the Bubs mania in Albania. Albania. Wow. Yes. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to start working on that. I'll get you an agent in Albania. Uh, that is funny though. People start where comics start out. They're not Bobcat Goldthwait. I don't think got a lot of attention in Boston. Then when he moved out to San Francisco, he was like a sensation. Yeah, and then he got all those movies where he made some really great career decisions. <laughs> there um, may have been some missteps. Well, I understood. Way. I understand doing the Police Academy film, one of them, uh, mm -hmm. but he did like four of them or five of them. I can't remember how many, uh, because that's a way into Hollywood. But then off of that, because he became so popular, he decided to make another movie in which he was the star 
And that was about the one about the horse, the talking horse or something? Yeah, I forget what the title that Maybe was. Maybe it was called uh, Bob or something like that, you know. Hey, somebody tried to call me. Uh, uh, tell them, oh, oh, that's a telemarketer. Funny, they just hung up. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, um, um, uh, yeah, so I mean. But you remember, yeah, I think, well, he got huge in San Francisco, I think, because of you, but uh, I just remember people would be lined up trying to get in the studio when he first came out to the city, and uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, you know, and he, he, he fancies himself a director now. Uh, and he's doing this show, uh, doing uh, Bob Bobcats, uh, Goldthwaites, Misfits, and Monsters, uh, which is uh, it's okay. It's not great, you know. It just kind of you know it's kind of it's okay, but it misses. Mm -hmm. Like the premises are great, but the follow through isn't. Um, like they they um, had had one which a guy uh, they were interviewing or something they run a guy for president of the United States who uh, among other things uh, well, like killed a little boy or something like that and they said well you know we can get around that you know <laughs> and I mean the premise was fine uh -huh. but it just didn't didn't make it you know and then there was another one where there was this rock star. And he made a deal with the devil, and that's a that's a good idea. But then the follow through didn't work as well, so it's kind of a it's kind of a disappointing show in a lot of ways. But I hadn't heard of it. I'll have to. Then again, I don't like Goldthwait that much because of what he did to me. Um, I never did anything wrong to Bob. I think you'll agree. I did nothing but good for Bob. Yeah, I didn't know you guys had a falling out. And he had a. a show he was doing uh, uh, HBO maybe it was a one night stand or whatever special at um, uh, out of the Fillmore and um, he gets up he, I see him before the show Alex how are you great, great to see you boy it's been a while you know yeah I've been down in Hollywood it's all working it's very very nice right mm -hmm. and then he goes on stage and the first five minutes of his act is putting me down really? And I can't, I'm going, what the fuck is that about? A couple of minutes ago, he's kissing my ass saying, great to see you. And now he's, number one, he's going on a national TV show and complaining about me, who the rest of the country doesn't even know about. You know, you're I... wasting your time up there because that's never going to make the cut. And I'm going, what, what the fuck did I ever do to him? And it was kind of, I think that some people just don't appreciate anybody that helps them because they'd like to think they made it on their own. Yeah, they actually resent it, so. Yeah. It's kind of a Trump mentality, actually. Uh, Trump tends to resent people who, uh, who, who don't exactly uh, kowtow to him. But I mean, so yeah, I, I guess mean, they feel like they, uh, they owe you or you owe them. I mean, yeah, well, I, I mean, I don't feel Bob owed me anything. Bob was a very talented comic, very funny comic, and 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 he actually made my enriched my life as well. So you know, but uh, it sold a lot of tickets for me. Uh, you, you know, I just, and I always paid. We always paid him really well. You know, was, there was no reason for the guy to to do that to me. You know, and he did it. Yeah, that's not nice. Yeah. So, I mean, fuck that. But anyway. So he, but, but he, you know, he, he hasn't been that successful. He's just managed to keep his name out there. Um, who was successful, he came out to San Francisco with a thing called the Dipsy Doodle Review. Do you remember that? Uncle Stinky. Yeah, Stinkies. it was uh, Uncle Tom St Kenny and yeah. Dan Spencer and yeah. uh, Paul Kozlowski. And, and the one who became... Actually, the most successful of all of them, more successful than Goldthwaite will ever become, was Tom Kenny. Yeah, uh, SpongeBob. He's SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. Right. And that thing. Which been, was he yeah. told me that was supposed to run for three years. I think it. I think it's been on for twenty now. It's something like that. Yeah, yeah. And and he did. You know, he did very well by that. So, 
you know. Well, he does that. Plus, he does he does tons of other voice work. So he's just uh, and he's great at it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and a nice guy, a really yeah, a great really, guy, really nice guy. Hey, uh, but anyway, so we're less successful than that. But what the hell? Are we happy? Well, maybe they'll take care of us when we're homeless. Are we happy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, we won't be homeless. We'll be living in the old people's home. So <laughs> they have a place for us. Uh, they, have a, they have a bed already for us. Anyway, we'll drool next to each other. Thank you, Larry. Talk Thanks, to you Alex. next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that was our good friend uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, and we love Larry, and uh, we love having him on, and I look forward to all my discussions with him. Anyway, I'm turning on the Skype. Let's see if anybody wants to call me tonight. Uh, I doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, let me see here. What else do I have to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't like to complain about my health, but for some reason I've got the trots today. So I hope we get enough of a citizens panel that if I have to suddenly run off to the bathroom, uh, th they will be more than happy to fill in for me while I'm out cleansing myself, <laughs> doing whatever I can do. Oh man, oh man, yeah, no, uh, the, the, the problem is I've got this, you know, I've, I've had for the longest time IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and um, due to that fact, I uh, uh, have been uh, uh, just, uh, oh wait a minute, I'm trying to do something here, and I, well, here comes Scott Boddicker. Hello, Scott. How are you? Already, Scott Boddicker, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and Phil Meyer is calling. It's I hear you got the shits, man. Uh, well, if if I if I have to run off, which may not happen, I'm just warning everybody. Then you guys can kind of run the show. I'll turn it. I'll turn it over to well, one of you two to host the show while I'm out taking. Uh, or it will be very fast, by the way, because. <laughs> Like shit through a goose. Well, I, I, you know, I've had this IBS for, geez, I don't know how long. Uh, and, uh, oh, God, he's wearing his NRA hat. Do you always have to do something to piss us off? It came in today's mail. Really? It, 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 how much are you spending with them to get that lousy fucking hat? Uh, I give them 100 bucks a year, $25 a quarter, uh -huh. and uh, and since I went on auto pay, uh, I get the hat. Didn't get the jacket. Uh, I was kind of disappointed. I would have had to give them the 1500 up front to get the jacket. To get the jacket. Listen, you do know the NRA is going bankrupt. <laughs> it's not my fault. I know, but you do know it's going bankrupt. They announced that the other day. Yeah. Well, you know, just because they go bankrupt doesn't mean they're going out of business. It just means that their vendors aren't going to get paid. And I'll tell you uh, a very interesting thing. And you, know how, you know how expensive see, bullets are. <laughs> yes. You see this hat, NRA? Yeah. yeah. See the back of the hat, American flag? Yeah. Okay. You see this tag here? Made, made in China? Made in China. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's it's hard to oh see. Oh my it. god! Yeah. Hey, look who's here. We haven't heard from him in a couple of uh, weeks. Here, Brian Ludwig is joining us. Uh, there he is. How Hello. are you, Brian? Gee, good to see you. Mm -hmm. Not driving. Yeah. And cheerful. Well, well, he's never cheerful. <laughs> yeah, well, I was being facetious. Brian, are you ever cheerful? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Not yeah. until I. Not until I have a. Uh, not until I can make a livable wage and have my own. You know. Yeah. Is things rough for you right now? Well, they they have been for quite a while. Yeah. Even before. Even before. Uh, in, in, even before engaging in this platform a year and a half ago, they they weren't the greatest. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'd give you a job here at Gabnet, but uh, the pay isn't very good. Because <laughs> we pay off in gabnet bucks. 
Yeah. And and in order for me to get enough GabNet bucks to pay you, I would have to go find a copy machine somewhere to make the GabNet bucks. Yeah, just use virtual GabNet bucks. Virtual? Oh, vir yes, right. Uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of like Bitcoin, Gab, but uh, Gab, GabCoin. GabCoin, yeah. GabCoin. Yeah. Am I hearing correctly that the NRA is on the verge of going bankrupt? That's what the, I heard sure. the other day. They were they were, they announced that they were having big money problems and they were going bankrupt. And I, I can't figure out why or how. You know. Do you know? Uh, you ever see? You ever see these uh, Oriental rug stores? They're always going out of business. Yeah. Uh, and having a going out of business sale, and then all of a sudden, it's the best business they ever did. Well, the best sign oh. I ever saw was on a fortune teller's door, and it said yeah. uh, "closed for business." And, and Slayton walked by it with me, and he looked at me and said, "You would have thought she saw that coming." <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but on the subject of business and uh, commerce and, and the economy, um, <clears throat> I've been uh, paying some, some attention to uh, all this drama that's unfolding concerning the Tesla Corporation and Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he... what's this about the uh, so several billion dollar thing? I didn't read the article. I just saw some... He some... wants to take the company public... No, private. It already is. He wants to go private. He wants to oh. take it back. Oh, I thought it was the other way. No. No. Read that wrong. They, they are a publicly traded company, and he wants to go private again. I thought they were having money problems. Why would he want to do that? Plus, he I wants, would to, think make, that he, maybe he wants could, to make an investment. He wants to make a multi-billion dollar investment to uh, add charging stations all across the country, especially in the vast expanses in the Midwest and whatnot. Yeah, well, that that makes sense. But you know, I I uh, lately I've been trying to eat healthy, and I've been going to Whole They're Foods. And, you know, and, and, that's and, the problem. They're proprietary. Phil, Phil can like I can I say this on an in, in, Android it, device I, can and I, vice versa? Can I say so, this, well, and I mean this only in the nicest way? Isn't it a little bit late? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, but what I'm but the reason I mention this is that when I go to park at the Whole Foods, it's a new one, and they've got all these charging stations uh, taking up maybe uh, six spots per uh, per aisle, and uh, there's an advertisement under it for the Leaf, which is a Nissan car. But I don't think these charging stations are specific to any kind of car. It's free, and if you and if you shop at the Whole Foods, you just plug in. Yeah, but and the trouble is, my question is with these electric cars. So you yeah. plug in. Let's say you've run out of electricity, and thank God you found yourself a place to plug in, right? Right. How yeah. long do you have to sit there before it's charged enough that you can get home? Well, let's say you're That's shopping for 45 minutes. Or minutes. Less. I'm yeah. told it was 30. I'm, I've been told it's uh, 30 minutes or less, but uh, the most people don't um, run their battery to the uh, to, to its uh, being 10 percent full or or less. They I want usually a, I want a uh, car drive for, yeah. you for an hour or two, and then they'll charge yeah. it. And I, I want a car that at Scott least Scott has a hybrid, right? Uh, no, the hybrids are different. It's a diff hybrid's it's a different. different. It's different. Yeah, hybrid's different. Hybrid. Aren't there hybrids you can charge? No, you, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are plug-in hybrids. Yeah. But they yeah, also the hybrids also run yeah. on gasoline. So right. while you're running on gasoline, the the motor is the motor is charging the the car or you right. know whatever. Yeah. And then when you have enough electricity, it runs on the electricity and not on the gasoline. I'd at, like to know at low speeds. At low speeds. Yeah, but I would like to know that I have the option. You know that if I run out of battery power, I mean these things only go 200 miles on a charge. It's not like you know. Uh, the Teslas, I think, go 300. 300? With an extended battery add-on that you purchase, it can go 300 or more. And Tesla's what, are, you got to drag that? And Tesla's <laughs> not a cheap car, either. No. You know. No. Well, it depends. 35 uh, you grand don't get any for the Model 3. And my question is, okay, uh, yeah, it's it's really nice. It's a great idea. It's terrific. We're all uh, in love with the, with the Tesla, uh, uh, the electric car, and it can go 300 miles on a charge or whatever. But when you take it home and you charge it, how much is the electricity costing you to charge it? 
It's probably uh, close to what it costs for gas. All it's I know is I got, I got a fucking air conditioning going 24 hours a day right now here because it's just yeah. been terrible, right? In fact, so bad that my air conditioner, the one I had in the bedroom, went bad, so we had to pull one from another window and put it in there. And actually, it turns out that I had a 10,000 BTU in, in the bedroom. Now I have a 12,500 BTU in the bedroom, so you didn't blow any fuses. And, and no, no, I did. I did the wiring thing. Anyway, the point is that uh, you know my bill last month for electricity because of the air conditioning is going to be higher this month was five hundred dollars. That's crazy. So, so, well, so what would it be? What the fuck would it be if I had I myself you, a hybrid? I I normally spend close to $500 a month in gas uh, fuel, you know, for the car. Yeah. And uh, one week, my buddy says, take my Prius because I'm taking his dog to work with me. He needed me to babysit the dog. Yeah. So I, I take his Prius, I drive it for a week, just like I normally would drive my FJ Cruiser. After a week, $10 worth of gas. $10. I mean, it was, you know, it it may it makes me say, you know. Of course, Phil re re Phil <laughs> returned the the car uh, with uh, an empty gas tank, but nonetheless, no, <laughs> you know. But all I'm saying is that, that but, oh yeah, I paid 500 bucks last month for electricity because we had the air conditioning going pretty well constantly. Yes, yeah. Jeff. One of my uh, friends work at a hospital. And they have a Prius, and uh, they're charged for free. Well, the Prius, uh, you don't plug in. Oh, I don't no, think. I'm sorry, not the Prius, but the, the plug in cars. The Leaf, like the Nissan Leaf right. or the Volt or one of those, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty economical when it costs you nothing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a Cadillac. And I didn't realize it was either last year or the year before's model. It's called an EL something or other. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I think it's built on the Volt uh, frame. And I saw it on the road and I said, you know, that's a really good looking car. And it was two door. It was just, it was a good looking car. So I stopped at the Cadillac dealership and they said, oh, we don't make that one. That one, they only made one year. And every year they make a different style. Now it's a four door. And I said, nah, I, I, you know, I wanted the sportier. Uh, and uh, good looking. It was all. And then there's a car out that I've been getting ads on because I clicked on it on Facebook once. It's called a Toyota Mirai, and it's uh, that is uh, hydrogen. And there's a place to buy the fuel cell in San Ramon, which is maybe 20 uh, miles from me. There but, we go. Uh, working right. <laughs> there's uh, there's Ray. working now. Yeah. There's Ray. You just don't have your camera on. Huh? He, oh, nice. good. Good. he does have his camera. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. uh, but this uh, hydrogen uh, sounds like it might be an interesting thing. It's totally clean and all it burns is water. Oh, it's like a Stanley steamer. <laughs> well, kind of, but it, it it doesn't heat up anything. I, I don't I don't know the the technology behind how it works, but uh, I like the idea that the only thing that comes out of the pipe is is water. Yeah, every now and then we, uh, they see these giant mushroom clouds along the highway. <laughs> That's but, a Toyota Mirai going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, have you, do you drive anything like a uh, a hybrid uh, Ray? No, I have a Volkswagen diesel Passat that I that I have to turn in in a couple of months and get my twenty six thousand five hundred dollars for because oh. because of the lawsuit that oh. VW was in oh, but really? it gets 45 miles to the gallon yeah. average oh they're good. giving you 20 oh they're giving you 26 grand because of the lawsuit yep and you it has 91,000 miles on it wait a minute you're wow. gonna get 90 you're gonna get 26 grand Twenty six five. Wow. Yeah. How did they come up with that? Uh, uh, it's based on your uh, initial mileage. How, how they average out your mileage when you first apply for it, and then they just you know, they stick with that unless you increase your mileage by a, a whole ton before you turn it in. 
Well, how old is yours? So 2013. Okay, and wow, but so do you have to give years. you have to give the car up for that twenty six thousand? Yeah. Oh. It has, 90, it has 91,000 miles on it. So if you, yeah, but that's yeah, nothing a for a diesel. That's nothing for a I, diesel. I know, but, but the cars aren't worth anything because the blue books are in the toilet because of the lawsuit. So you uh, can take the 26,000 and buy another car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 9,000 more dollars, you can get a Tesla 3. Maybe you can yeah. buy the car back for like 10,000. Te Tesla has I don't, a number of problems. Uh, what people are complaining about bit. is the uh, length of time it takes to get uh, parts or service. That yeah. sometimes people are waiting six months for uh, for for service items and for parts uh, uh, from Tesla. Uh, what kind of know. parts? It's it's like a, a fender, yeah, or, you know, oh. you know, windshield. Well, you the know, trouble just the, the trouble with the trouble with Tesla is that you're dealing with a car company that doesn't have a huge infrastructure. You know, I mean, it's a newer car company. So it does, it's not like Detroit where, you know, they're turning out bumpers all the time. You know, so- They uh, took over the Numi plant in, uh, Hay yeah. in I think in Hayward yeah. or, uh, you know, down, down that way. Uh, and that Numi plant was a combination of Toyota and GM. And then uh, when GM went bankrupt, uh, Toyota got out of the deal. I, I, and everybody Tesla like you, guys like you, are praying for Elon Musk to fail. And quite oh frankly, no, I, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, that I'm, he's, I'm uh, praying for his success because the things he's doing are just incredible. Well, I, 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 I like his success as well. I think he's, uh, he's, he's great, and and he's a visionary. Uh, why would I want him to fail? I think though that if I were him, I'd probably give up Tesla or sell it or something and just concentrate on the. Uh, on the rocketry, uh, because the space stuff is where he's going to make some real big bucks. Yeah, but he's got a lot of technology that comes out of that, including battery technology. Yeah. Um, Alex. Yeah. Yes, It's Brad. not just those on the right that want Elon Musk to fail, though. It's, uh, I, don't, you know, I don't think he's a you, proprietary what? cocksucker. He's just like uh, he's just like Apple, and you know, the, the, you, know wait, wait, you wait, can't wait. use other products on our things, and, it, and we're we're going to make it difficult for you to use uh, to use uh, this 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 part or this. Well, in as much as on, I uh, on it, our thirty five grand it, machine, in as much as I don't own a launch rocket, I really don't give a shit. Hey, you know. I had a friend that came for lunch the other day. He pulls up to the store. He's got one of those Tesla S's, which is the $80,000 one. And he says, watch this. And he's, he's, we're standing in the parking lot. He pushes a button, and the car backs out of the space with nobody in it and, and, and can park itself. And uh, it, it was amazing. And then I said, well, how comfortable are the seats? And I got in the thing, and these seats were beyond comfortable so wait a minute uh, i want to find out brian's problem with with musk i mean you don't own a tesla so it's not I like i don't want him to fail either don't get me wrong i don't want him to fail but i have my i have i have issues with people like him with people like him and people like jeff Bezos. well Bezos. you say like him uh, what's like him what is he yeah, i think he, i think he's different than the rest of them to tell you the damn truth you know, oh, Jeff I Bezos. Be I agree. You know, Jeff Jeff Bezos is going to get into the rocket business, but only because uh, Elon Musk led the way. You know, um, I I just don't see anything that wrong with Elon Musk. You know, I don't see that he's ripping anybody off, and I think he's, he's an giving, immigrant. Uh, yeah, he's giving Canadian. A, he's giving but, a lot uh, back. South African. I thought he was South African. Now, if you oh, want really? to if you want to hate, if you want to hate, if you want to hate Tim Cook and Apple, and you want to, or you want to hate Facebook and what's his name, uh, I'm with you That's all the way. Point. I'll lead the charge. We can go get the torches and uh, uh, storm the castle. You know, but uh, with Elon Musk, I think we're dealing with a guy who's he's he so far he hasn't done any evil you know what i'm saying uh i remember yeah, when those kids were trapped in thailand he tried to come up with something so and some english snob you know gave him a hard time but uh you know he tried to come up with that <laughs> capsule you know that uh to to get the kids out of uh of the uh thing but you know the, the it, english snob said it wouldn't work so elon musk called him a pedophile 
Well, he probably was. Did Elon, <laughs> oh, come on. Did Elon Musk That's call bullshit. him a pedophile? No. Yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, uh, they, they called uh, they they called each other names. It was no, not no, 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 no. He said the fucking thing won't work, and Elon Musk said, "Well, you're a petty. You're a petty anyway, pedophile." <laughs> That's what he said. Been a petty person. The no, guy, he meant pedophile. Maybe the guy was a pedophile. We don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Well, he was English. A lot of those guys are pedophiles. Right, Jesus. You know, why do you think they uh, took over Italy? Uh, not Italy, uh, uh, India. You know? Uh, <sighs> it was for the young boys. Yeah, okay. Here. I know. Big size, Scott. Big size. I can't handle this shit. Hey, uh, they, so just so you know, Volkswagen can pay me six thousand bucks if I keep the car. They'll fix it. They'll fix it. Well, what's wrong what's with it? Well, let me ask the questions here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what, yeah. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's supposedly wrong? Well, there there was a, there, there was, was a middle a, manager middle at manager at, 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 at uh, Volkswagen who uh, his group changed the software many years ago in the Jetta and the Passat and some of the Audis so that when they in the diesel cars when they were getting a smog test it would give false information as to how clean the exhaust was coming oh, out of the back. Oh, I remember that, yes. And uh, I think some professor at Virginia Tech or something was doing a class and, and it analyzed it and found out and discovered it and then told whoever needed to know and they all got sued and Volkswagen lost billions of dollars yeah because I, I, I remember I, I remember get your 26 grand and wash your hands yeah so. yeah but I mean I remember that case now and uh, it was that they falsified uh, the emission stamp yeah through the People software that's a chip, chip the blue book, right? yeah so. they, they, they they it was able to detect when it was having a smog test and then it would give false information so how does it make it worth it to give you twenty six thousand dollars outside of the fact that i it's not worth it it's the penalty they have to pay they have to make everybody they have to make all of us who have these cars um oh they have to make us happy well how, why, <laughs> they could have made you cars happy are useless because the cars have to come off the road so that no one's going to buy them oh they have to come off the road yeah or get fixed Oh, and, okay. and, they, and, to, and to fix them, they have to put something in the trunk, apparently. Yeah. Uh, a big, some type of machinery in the trunk to fix the false information. Wait, you lose all your trunk. So space. why would you? I, why right? would you? Why yeah. would you rather take the twenty-six thousand rather yes. than take the six thousand and have them fix it? Yeah, because um, the car has like almost ninety-two thousand miles on it. Yeah. And you know, and my old, yeah. Ray, is this smog thing something new? Because I used to have a diesel truck, uh, and uh, you didn't have to get it smog. They were exempt for in, in California from smog uh, diesels. Uh, well, it's I know it's been that way with. Uh, it was first it started with the Jettas. I'm not sure how far back. Um, maybe trucks didn't have to get checked. Have to get checked. Right. Maybe it was right. just. Maybe it was just. Uh, maybe it was cars. I don't know. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, my truck uh, had a gross vehicle weight under a certain amount that it was kind of treated more like a car, uh, even though it had six wheels, and because uh, uh, it, it was only a one and a half ton. Gee, but I, uh, I don't how care. long ago? I, I don't care about any of this because um, I don't. Own I bought a car. it in '85. I think I got rid of it in 2005. Oh, okay. Yeah, these were way after that. This were uh -oh. all cars like I think the earliest manufacturer was 2006 or something like that. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. you have you have a kind of be a be smirched look on your face. Is there a reason for that? Turn your microphone on. Turn <laughs> your, what? What color was his truck? Oh, it was white. It was an Iveco. It was, it was an it was yeah, an Italian right. truck. It's really interesting, with, isn't it, Jeff? With a with a German diesel engine. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean everything we, I, I, we, we could of course we could mention garbage, and then he would tell us a ten-minute story on how he owned garbage <laughs> once. Yes, garbage is important, and I use I, I charge that garbage uh, before I get into the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> I just, well, can I say you know, something about the Tesla? Now yeah. all we need is Steve. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on, uh, hold on a second. Here, no. co here comes Patrick. Some sanity oh. joins the uh, panel. 
Uh, and his name is Patrick. Hey, Patrick. The Patrick Nader. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be me. Yeah, the Patrick Nader. So, uh, anyway, hey, a lot of people tonight. Gee, if I had you on the new Skype, I'd only be able to have four of you on at a time. Mm. Oh, I found out how not to have that bubble come up with the five on it or the number on it, <laughs> uh, Patrick. Uh, there's a thing in which you have a choice of going to floating or window. And if you go to window, then I guess you see all the people up above because Jeff says he sees little circles with all the people. Okay. Yeah. Am I, am I right, Jack? Right now I see three people in the. You see three people in the, in the circle. In the well, circle. two people in the circle and one in the box. Yeah, but the people. The, what you say, people in the circle. You can see them all. Right. Huh? Well, the little circles. In addition yeah. to that, I see four people. Yeah. So, but but also you see little Six. circles with the people in them. Right. Oh, okay. So that's it, and you have it set it that way. So okay, so the the way that Patrick's been using it, it's it, see. I mean, this is what's so terrible about this whole new thing. It's, it sucks. With the Mac, I've got uh, six uh, equal uh, uh, horizontal things: two across and three down. Yeah, well, that's yeah. because you're using the Mac and you're using the yeah. Skype Classic. Yeah. Well, we're not that's talking about that. We're talking about this new piece of shit. They thrust on the world that everybody hates yes big cock of jamming down your throat too many fucking options yeah i i i see exactly what jeff was saying but then if jeff moved his cursor next to the last circle there will be another circle that comes up that's gray and it'll have like a person with a line through it and that's where i always get a number, number. <laughs> When the numbers come up, I see. Okay, well, I'll, right now I'll, there's only six people in round yeah. seven, including me. Yeah, I can see everybody. Right, four boxes, two circles, and then I'm in the square. Uh, yeah, the okay, top. all right, all right. Well, uh, uh, I will find out all in a couple of, in about a week or so. I'm going to ask all of you to join me on like a a Monday or a weekend or something. And mm -hmm. to test this new thing out, I'm going to try to do it on the same machine I'm using it on now. But I have to. There's a thing I have to launch in order to get the picture on the screen. It's really, it's, it's at horrendous. my current weight. Will I take up two circles? No. No. <laughs> what, Whoa! What's what that? Is that? Uh, I think Jack uh, came on, and now no, what so is that? Uh, we're sharing a screen with somebody. Yeah. Bill, I have more reason to worry about wait a minute, that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who what brought the hell that? Is this? Who brought that up? Oh, some somebody put up a screenshot, yeah, I and I see what the classic <laughs> Skype was going to look like. But there's like uh, somebody's I, desktop here. Yeah, I think it, I think it was uh, I think it was Jack. I saw his his no, thing. That's not it. I, there's oh, some here. somebody is has has got has put my our Skype on this thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. you've been hacked. <laughs> no, I think it might be you, Phil. No, I don't have that one. Ah. It's a well, Macintosh. Where where did it, this come from? Where did what come from? I don't know. It's, it's like just a Mac just on my screen. screen. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on. I may have to call you all back. Let me see. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, what I the don't. hell is this? Do you know the desktop that's on the bottom isn't my desktop? It's Jeff. Ta it's Jeff. I see his name on the top. Jeff Stein. Uh, it says mean, it right really? there. Oh, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jeff. Jeff, you did something. Probably. Yeah. But he, but <laughs> this, uh, he he now took over the thing. You, you took it. Oh, over. what's that little heart? It's all that, delayed. Uh, Oh, this is that, this is that little heart. Is that your heart? Uh, oh, stop sharing. You, you're we're, sharing we're, his screen. We're looking at Jeff's screen. Okay, so where do you put stop? Sh where's stop sharing? It went away. Where? No, it but it's still sharing. Cool. Right there. Uh, this one. Oh, stop sharing. Okay. Push it. Put that. Yes. Yes. Push that. Okay. No, it's still. Well, that didn't stop it. Oh boy. That's useless. Don't see. do that. Turn it off and come back. Why don't you hang up and come back? 
I don't know what sure. you did that did this. I, oh, there goes everybody. Well, now I we clicked still on, see I it clicked on, on you know what he's uh, doing? something. He's sharing, he's sharing his screen with us. That's his desktop. Pretty. He's sharing yeah. his desktop. He, yeah. And he's got to stop sharing his desktop. And I don't know how we can do that. He's shutting down Type Skype. Your password is. He's shutting, well, there thank go. God he shut down <laughs> Skype. Oh, God. Well, it, it said JS. Whoever JS is, it is that Jeff Stein? Stein? Yeah. It said Jeff okay, Stein. Okay, that's. Then. Yeah. yeah, but that how did he how did he share normal. that whole thing with us, and how was he able to hijack the screen? I Some want to feature. Out how to he's an en it. he's an engineer. This is <laughs> this is the brand new wonderful Skype we're gonna have to live with, folks. Now anybody can hijack your screen. Huh? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I think he <laughs> he hit something that made him share yeah. our screen. Yeah. And well, I know that uh, Amy used to do that all the time, but I don't know how she did it. Uh, well, she did it by being annoying. That was for starters. <laughs> she was a very nice person. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, sure. sure. Takes one and another one. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with, I'm with uh, uh, our good friend Brian. Um, I think, uh, marginally speaking, Alex, you would have more of a reason to hate her than I do. Oh, really? Oh, Only okay. because you run this okay. network. Let's see what I happens if I add uh, Jeff Clash now. her many times. Uh, Jeff, I don't know what you pressed, but you pressed something that hijacked our screen. <laughs> now, I'd like to know what it is. I'm going to try to find it. You, I see yeah. it. It's share screens. It's under, even on the old one, you can do it. Uh, where, where is it? I just saw it. Uh, oh. uh, a oh, Where the hell did it go? I just was looking at it. Uh, what? There is saw, a there is a it. share screen. And yeah, it's call share screens. It's under call. It's, and then it's share oh. screen. Are you using the new Skype or the old Skype? Old one. Under call. Yeah. And then you I got C calls. You got oh, oh, call. uh, Skype uh, conversation call view tools and help. It, yeah, but under call, it I don't see it. I don't see it. Oh, on call. mine, I have share screens. I never saw this before. It says more options. But yeah, I have yeah. the old one. But I don't think I pressed that. But Maybe I have a, a newer old one. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Share sound system. Share screens. Here it is. Yeah. yeah. I bet that's How about share spit? I bet what happened was you shared your screen with us, and that's how you hijacked us. And we saw, of course, us because we were also on the screens. But at least I got a preview of what I have to put up with. That's right. Suggest yeah. that Jeff keeps his secrets from himself. Sort of that's like a nuclear option. If he ever gets pissed at everybody, he can just fuck everything up. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, you're gone. Yeah, you probably could have gotten rid of it by unsharing your screen. He tried. Uh, he clicked. I saw him click on uh, the stop sharing. Uh, yeah. It was down at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Jeff, what was all that porn on your screen? Yeah, what was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what was, was it anything good? No. <laughs> there was no watch porn. Later. There was no porn. <laughs> uh, Gills. Well, anyway, so uh, that at least it gave me an idea of what it looks like because, and you did have the people, the various people in circles up at the top. So, you know, I just more work I'm going to have to do. And. I'm also going to have to, there's a thing where I can't using OBS, which is a program I use to switch I'll this, call you back. this show. Okay. All right. Bye-bye, Brian. Uh, yeah. Uh, that it, it, uh, it, it uh, changed uh, the, uh, uh, that it, it doesn't, the OBS does not record the Skype. I can't pick up the Skype screen. The Skype screen is invisible to it. So I have to use a secondary program called uh, uh, NDI Excellent. Studio Monitor, which I then launch, and then I—it's uh, a whole story. It's just it it, 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 it. When I finally get it together, probably it'll be a lot easier to do. But I want to be able to use still use the PC to do the the work here, uh, rather than go over to the Mac to do it. So can you all hear me? Yeah, we yep. hear you fine. Okay, good. 
Yeah, where are you? In a different place? Different computer? Yeah, just in a, just across the room using yeah. a wired connection on my desktop PC, whereas before I was communicating to you through a phone mm -hmm. with a, what appears to be increasingly spotty and shitty Wi-Fi coverage. Oh, okay. Well, that, welcome to Wi-Fi coverage. Well, uh, this is the wired, so... Yeah. Uh, anyway, um... um yeah, Let's see, welcome, last night welcome we, to the new Skype is more like it. Last night we brought up uh, the uh, uh, the situation with, uh, what's his name, the big fat turd. Uh, uh, Weinstein? No. Uh, you know, the guy who thinks uh, that uh, the Connecticut school killing was... Uh, oh, that motherfucker. Oh, uh, was that Alex the uh, guy Alex on Alex Facebook? Jones. That, how, how come Jones, I can't yeah. remember Alex yeah, Jones when he shares the same name with me? Hey, Bernie. Hey, you know, talking about Bernie and, and that other communist, they, they, I, I was their getting, elections I, I was didn't getting, go too I was well. getting onto a subject, Phil. Oh, what elections are you can talking I go, about? Can I go, after go with Alex is done with this thing? Because the five. Five. He always changes the subject whenever there's... Like a yeah. in the no, conversation it, it, he, he hijacks hey. the show. Well, uh, what's wrong with Alex Jones? Oh, my God. Well, you know, the, uh, that's the uh, man with uh, the NRA hey, hat. Fer Fer Farrakhan still has his Facebook page. Yeah, Farrakhan. And, and, and he says hate hateful things about Jews. Uh, <laughs> name no. one. Read one to me. Uh, that guy Michael Savage put a bunch of them on his I don't uh, care. His thing. Let me hear one. I don't. I don't have the recording. Well, then, then don't uh, don't don't uh, no, uh, say that he did. Hey, that's what he said. I'll look it up. I'll look Wait a up minute. The Wait a minute. Can't... Alex Jones said that the shooting never happened. That yeah. it was a government hoax. Come on. There are people that said there was no Holocaust either. Yeah, I know they're insane. Yeah, but they don't get kicked off Facebook. <laughs> they should be. But I don't yeah, think. Yes, no, uh, they yes Patrick. Be. Patrick. I, Patrick. I, this is where this is where you and I disagree, and this is where I disagree with the uh, you know PC Nazi uh, left wing of the establishment. Uh, if uh, you get if you if you allow Facebook. YouTube, Twitter, and all these other fucking places to uh, dictate the terms and conditions as to who can stay or who can't and not allow the people like myself and yourself to say, okay, we're not going to listen to them anymore. We're going to make our own pages that criticize uh, Alex Jones or our own pages that criticize Donald Trump or other private citizens as opposed to public ones like Donald Trump, then uh, you're, 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 asking, uh, you're asking these private entities acting on behalf of an Orwellian government to be Orwellian themselves. Very okay, let me ask, do you pay day. for Facebook? Do you pay for Facebook? Well, wait a minute. Yeah, look, 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 I mean, I mean, first of all, first of all Patrick, Patrick has his hand up, has no, had his directly. hand Patrick has had his hand up for a while. Yes, Patrick. Okay, two things. Um, one, I have heard several of Farrakhan's speeches, and he does say anti-Jew rhetoric, um, as well as, as you can imagine, anti-white, and, and that. So I have heard him. You can look him up on Facebook, and... They're at an interview that I think they're very interesting to listen to because I've got an open mind enough to listen to people that, you know, are on the other side. Did you ever hear the interview? The other, did you, uh, wait, 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 wait. Did you ever hear the interview I did with him? Um, yeah, I think it, that was one of them that you played. Yeah, on. well, I mean, in that interview, and that was many, many years okay. ago. He said to me, I, "Don't go looking stuff." I got up, it. Phil. I got it. I don't, wanted it. I got it. No, I don't. I don't I, well, I don't want it. Let me let me up. just tell you that Farrakhan no said to me, he said, uh, "The concept that I hate Jews is completely erroneous." He says, "In fact, when I was growing up, I was a violinist, and one of my biggest heroes was Yasha, Yasha Heifetz, who was a Jew." Uh, so you, you know. Uh, yeah, and wh where did you go to get it, Phil? Where'd you go to get it? This is CNN.com. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, let me give you this quote. White folks are going down, and Satan's going down, and Farrakhan, by God's grace, has pulled the cover off that satanic Jew. I am here to say that your time is up. Your world is through, he later said. Uh, so that's... What, that's that, uh, that, that satanic Jew. What, what's that satanic uh, Jew? Uh, okay, Jake Tapper, he says uh, uh, some anti-Semitic comments made by, uh, wait a minute, I, what? 
You see, when you have to, sites, uh, Nixon and uh, read, Graham read attacking this stuff Jews, before rip you, on the media. Uh, read this stuff he says, before He says you the quote Jews it. run the media. Uh, uh, Farrakhan calls Jews the mother and father of apartheid. Uh, uh, there's that's others not, in that's here. That's not anti-Semitic. Uh, that is just his opinion. Go ahead. Well, hey, you know, it's 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 hate speech. It's not, and, 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 and there's, look, and there's well, plenty uh, of the others. The point that I'm making is, is that, quite frankly, I think that if you're going to have something like Facebook, where anybody can say what they want to say, then why can't Alex Jones say it? And I Agreed. don't like Alex Jones. I think Did he's a creep. I think he's a moron. But I'm saying, if you're going to have this oh, this Hyde Park on the internet where people can put any graffiti they want to on their page, then so be it for uh, for him. I may yes. not agree with what you say, but I'll fight to the death exactly. for your right to say it. Exactly. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, and the other point I wanted to make is, Phil was confusing me because I, I was listening last night, and you were saying, Alex, exactly what you're saying now, but Phil was somehow defending... No. No, I, I was defending Facebook, and I still think that they are correct in their model as to how they deal with it. Yeah, no, but wait a, a minute, wait a minute. But what is, not, what, is their, not, what is their model, Phil? Well, their model is that it, when you it, sign up to use no, Facebook, yeah. you agree, you agree uh -huh. to their terms and conditions. Okay, and what are their terms and conditions? No hate speech. No nudity. Well, wait a minute. And now, who is going to determine whether something is hate speech or not hate speech? They're going to determine it. Oh, I see. Uh, but okay, the problem okay, is okay. So I'm going to have I'm going to have a anything, bunch of corporate oh, assholes. I'm going to have a bunch of corporate assholes figure out what is hate speech and what isn't hate speech. Well, what is hate speech according to Facebook is anything that's said by the right wing. If it's said by the left wing, it's allowed to stay. Uh, that's vis -vis now, now you're Farrakhan. lying, Phil, and now you're extending the truth. There's there's no you're. Oh God, you're amazing. Now, where's you where speak, speak, you when We need him because I think uh, more and more as I as I age, the more inclined I am to agree with him to just want to say fuck it all and disconnect my uh, profiles and just live on my own little island. I think he has the. I think he's the smartest of all of us on this on this on this platform. Yeah. Bravo, well, he, he's kind of baked out of of calling and stuff because he's just tired of the whole yeah. thing, you know. So, I envy him in, other way, in, yeah, in some ways. Yeah, yeah. I really do. Well, I, I envy him a lot, and I think the world of him as well, and I, I cherish the times when he calls. Here's Jack Bishop joining us. Uh, uh, we're one person short of a full house. Oh, uh, we have, and we have Tony as well. So I keep swearing I'm not going to do this. <laughs> but, every time, but every time Bill Myers makes an idiot statement and alludes to somebody that is as unimportant as Louis Farrakhan is. I but he has a Facebook page and, and Alex Jones doesn't. And and I agree with Alex Bennett that, hey, Alex Jones has a right to a Facebook page and a, uh, to be heard. But the difference between Louis Farrakhan yeah. and Alex Jones. Here's our full house. Yeah. How many people pay attention to Louis Farrakhan? Well, obviously, know. Alex. Hey, here, here's a statement. Chicago Tribune. Louis Farrakhan, oh, anti Semitism. Uh, enough, the silence enough on the left. Phil. Enough. All right. Enough. Here's my question, Phil. How many people pay attention to Louis Farrakhan? How many. Radio. There's a lot, a lot of people. Pay not, to not Louis two point, not two point four, not two point four million people, Phil. It's enough. How many people do you need to hate the Jews? Well, the thing is, how many people do you need to hate anybody? How, how many, many Jews do you need to hate the Jews? Hey, how big is the nation of Islam? <laughs> he runs the nation of Islam, right? No, he does not. No, he. Uh, does not. Let me repeat that. No, he does not. He's, it says here. Are you? Will you listen, Phil? Phil, you refuse to listen to somebody who knows the subject matter. Well, he says he's not running the nation. Turn, of turn your camera right on here. and off again, uh, Jack. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you say he's not running the nation of Islam. Will you explain to Phil why? All right. The nation of Islam is run by a guy named Wallace D. Muhammad. The last time I looked, the son 
of the late Elijah Muhammad. Now, Louis Farrakhan split off, or that group split off from Louis Farrakhan years ago, more than 30 years ago, to the best of my memory. I was young then. Yeah, look, it was back when <laughs> Jeff and I both had hair and all of our own teeth, and our, our organs were not electronically tuned. Okay, March 8th, March oh, 8th Jesus Christ, Phil, no more! No more! Well, you're going to not have a full house now, in a second. Well, the last time I heard Louis Farrakhan mentioned in any black barbershop that I have been in in the last 40 years. Jack, it doesn't matter. The, thing, the, the reason I mentioned it is because Alex Jones, who I don't like, I, and I, Louis Farrakhan, who I don't like, one has a presence on Facebook and the other doesn't. Well, they I, both and, and by the way, somebody more despicable, more, somebody more despicable than I both of them. Hold, hold on a second, Jack. And by the way, turn on your camera. It's whirling. Oh, turn, oh it's uh, turn okay, it off. It and throws on. here. On uh, 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 somebody even worse than Louis Farrakhan or Alex Jones has access to Facebook. Donald <laughs> Trump. Uh, now he uses Twitter, right? Doesn't he? Then he's behind. Then he should get a Facebook page and Instagram. Yeah. Louis Farrakhan does run the Nation of Islam still. Thank you very much. Okay, fine. I don't I'll give just, a big. No, I, I'm just. I'm just telling you. He has the fact. No you know, you, in the black community, if that's where you're headed. I don't know. You know, I'm if if saying. you knew anything about the black community, Jack, maybe you would well, have I, agreed I, with. I, hell of a lot. <laughs> lot Black longer than you have, brother. As a matter of fact, I was probably Jewish before you were. <laughs> like Sam Davis, he was Jewish. Yeah. Because Anybody Alex remembers. Him? And not a member of Islam. Alex oh, remembers. Well, Alex remembers when I thought about converting until I discovered the Unitarians and found out I didn't have to convert to a damn thing. <laughs> you guys have help. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, do you guys have help? Unitarians? Yeah. Well, here's what happens when Unitarians die, and we get to heaven. By the way, by the way, your really camera. Hate. Turn your camera on and off again, Jack. Yeah. It's let just me draw it again. Around. We want to see if beautiful. All right. No. As I was about to say before, my camera became the topic of discussion. When Unitarians die, and we get to the pearly gates, we see a sign that says, "To God," with an arrow pointing in one direction. And then another arrow that says, discussion about God. And that's the one we pick. Yeah, but most but no you, hell. Most Unitarians, I, I always say this about Unitarian churches, that we love having former Jews in the congregation because Jews and agnostics will volunteer to run committees. That's true. But no hell, right? No hell. All right. Well, you see, well, we are non-creedal. You know, uh, uh, there is no set litany of belief that you have to espouse. It's like going to the cafeteria. I refer to myself sort of as a Hebraic Unitarian in that I don't buy the concept of hell because I know how hell came into Judeo-Christian thought. It has nothing to do with... Uh, the way most people think of it. But getting back to Louis Farrakhan, Louis Farrakhan is a non-entity. You know, he hasn't actually been heard of on a national basis since the Million Man March. And you know why there will be no Million Man Redneck March, Phil? Yeah, because Alex Jones is a moron. No, and, but, the, no, and, no, and the shit that he ex no, and the nobody, shit that he talks no, about nobody, is moronic. Nobody is, is no arguing that. Man redneck but, no, no, because it's no, not no, enough parking spaces for all those nobody is, nobody is nobody is no, nobody is arguing that. But I got to tell you, it's awfully hypocritical of Facebook because they allow so much other shit on Facebook. That's what I said, and they're making an example. <clears throat> Of Alex Jones, and the same thing goes for for iTunes. There's so much shit on iTunes, and yet they're going after Alex Jones. Uh, they should clean up. If they're going to clean up, they should clean up the whole house, or they should say, "Listen, we don't censor what people have to say. We consider ourselves a common carrier, and people can say anything they want to on their pages. Other people have the right 
to go on those pages and say how they feel about it. Digital. Well, the info it, wars but, app but is they still don't. there. The info wars app is still there. No, uh, the, the app I, isn't. The, uh, they still have an app. There is an yeah. InfoWars app, and as a matter of fact, it has become very popular in the last couple of days because it's the one way you can access his programming. Yeah, yeah it's increased his, and inflamed his popularity. And you, can, and you can buy the app. You, you can either, uh, I don't know if you pay for it or not, but you can get the app on the uh, on the App Store in Apple. But you can't get yeah. it on iTunes. Now, what, what what's with that? Where's your yeah. consistency, Apple? Yeah. You know, yeah. these people, are, I don't know, and I don't know what day they all kind of decided. I think the first one that decided to get rid of Alex Jones was iTunes. And then all these other people fell into line because they didn't want to look bad. And as a mea culpa to Phil Meyer, I took the time while you guys were talking to check Wallace D. Muhammad. The organization that he runs is called the American Muslim Mission. Okay. So, correct it. Never heard of it. No. So, I mean, look, you can say what you want oh. to about... Uh, about uh, it's amazing that for hate speech, you didn't bring up the American Nazi Party or the uh, Ku Klux they, Klan. Wait a Hold on a second. Let me good. finish, Phil. Or the Ku Klux yeah. Klan. You happen to bring up a black guy. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? It just, it, it was something I heard uh, today uh, 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 on that Michael Savage, and he had mentioned... Another, another fucking racist. Yeah. Uh, and a Jewish racist. But, I, you know, I, he has, he just comes from a different angle. I don't think he's a racist. Oh, really? Do you yeah, know I Michael he, Savage? Yeah. What, what, what quotes do you have saying that he's a racist? I've dealt with him personally. Yeah, yeah. I found him to be. Uh, I know a lot about uh, about Michael Savage. I'm not going to tell you about here, but it's all pretty unsavory. Put it so this why way: wouldn't this, uh, there why are wouldn't this uh, that are relate to him. what? 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 Kevin? Why? Why wouldn't this relate to uh, the whole thing with the Facebook and the 31, uh, the 31 uh, people that you know that story the other day with the 31. What was it? The thirty-one people they took off, or the oh what yeah, was it? you know the thirty-one, and, and then all of a sudden they pull off Alex Jones. Do, doesn't that relate a little bit? Couldn't that be some kind of relation there? No, but the thirty-one were these Russian uh, bots and okay. things that were so they're providing trying to make they're news. trying to make good there. Yeah. So why not you know play around with it with this too? Because if they're going to do it to this guy, they're going to try and make force... face. They're yeah. trying to make face. With with who? With the Congress. Yeah, Alex Jones. Uh, you know, the Congress is is uh, right leaning. Uh, if I they think Facebook if they were just fair about to make it. themselves look good. Well, you know what happened, Phil. You saw how much you lost okay, well, uh, hold... in money on Facebook. Their stock dropped like thirty percent last week in one day. Yeah, Facebook is That's just trying to make themselves look good. Yeah, you know what? He must have lost about ten million dollars. He has to. Alex Jones. Ten million dollars. Billion. Uh, billion. Billion. Sixteen billion. Like Sixteen billion dollars. He lost. They'll yeah. probably come up with another one. Yes, pa yes, pa yes. Alex Jones is a curb. He cost me sixteen billion. <laughs> yes, Patrick. I think the difference between the thirty-one with the Russians and Alex Jones is they were climbing the thirty-one. Russians were part of the. Conspiracy or whatever, for, uh, meddling in the election, yeah. and Alec Jones is just hate speech. I don't think that there is a correlation. And if Alec is correct, Alec Bennett, that is not Jones, <laughs> um, that Apple is the first one that took Alec Jones off. So if if it was all Facebook, there might be some correlation, but it, I don't think there is. He's probably saying right, that. but there, there was there was always that question right. was whether there was correlation there to make Facebook look good. Jack has his hand up. Another thing that uh, hasn't been brought up: Twitter, Facebook, all of this social media is like the Wild West. There are, you know, there are no uniform rules. There's no regulatory entity about who can post what they can post. What's that supposed to mean? There's it's no Alex Jones. 
There's uh, nothing out there that governs these entities. That's why I love the internet. It's like everything. It's like start. Anything goes really. You really. Don't, that's why you can't judge what you read unless you're actually seeing it. Well, Isn't I mean, it? the problem. The problem here is, is that um, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, uh, Apple are all only caring about one thing, and that's the bottom line. And yep. they will do anything they can do to make themselves look good. And yep. Alex Jones, I mean, I hate Alex Jones. I find him despicable. I even find that he does things that endangers people. Okay? Oh, yeah. um, but, uh, like, you remember the Pizzagate situation? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a perfect example of where somebody could have gotten hurt. Okay? Uh, but he is, uh, he is a scuzzbag and all of that. But I'm going to sit here and defend his right to be seen on Facebook because that is supposedly the d democratic uh, entity that is Facebook. They have said the reason they exist is for that reason. And yep. if they don't allow freedom of speech, then Facebook technically doesn't exist any longer. They're trying to be the F fucking CC. Exactly. And the uh, same thing so, is true. And, and I have, to hand, I have, to, hand it, I have to hand it to Twitter. <laughs> Twitter has not joined the fray. Alex no, Twitter, Jones, Twitter got rid of somebody today uh, that uh, was controversial. Was it Alex Jones? or I don't know. I don't think well, so. In the past, they've banned people like Twitter has banned people like Milo Yiannopoulos, haven't they? Uh, I don't know. Who's, me, who's he? Uh, he? He's a right wing gay guy. Uh, that uh, seems to incite. Uh, he was on an episode. He was on the only episode of uh, Real Time with Bill Maher that uh, all, really all shone saying, light on uh, how saying, despicable he is as a human being and yeah, got his. All book I'm saying case. is, is that who is going to be the judge? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think I know what hate speech is. I think uh, certainly Jack knows what hate speech is. Uh, I, I, for instance, think that our president has been engaged in a constant case of hate speech in the last couple of months, calling black people dumb. Okay, but uh, uh, but the point is that that's, was Don Lemon. That, that's my case, no yeah, no. He called he also writer. called the basketball player what's his name. He called the him uh, he fans. called him dumb as well. He <laughs> also called me. Maxine He's Waters rhythm, dumb. Bro. He uses dumb whenever he's referring to black people, Phil, and that's a he's fucked disabled people. He's done all that crap. Well, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the Facebook uh, things. They talk about safety. They talk talk, talk about a voice that, uh, and they they have, uh, and, and if anyone violates their standards, uh, when was this uh, written, by the way? Uh, I just looked up uh, Facebook's community standards. Yes, uh huh. And when was that written? Um, doesn't say. Oh, maybe it was. How about if it was written day before yesterday? <laughs> well, it might be. Uh, yeah. uh, violence and criminal behavior, safety, objectionable content, integrity and authenticity, respecting intellectual property and content. Well, what, uh, and what did and what and what did they say that? Alex oh, this is 2018. What what did it say? Yeah. Okay. So they just made them up. Uh, the the question I have for you is that what did they say they took Alex Jones off specifically for? And you can't say they said anything because they didn't. They did not yep. specify anything in particular. Did and now again, folks, if Alex you're listening Jones? to me, I'm not defending Alex Jones. What I'm defending is freedom of of expression and speech. Yes, Patrick. Um, I just pulled up an article. I don't know how you pronounce uh, it. What? Um, B-O-X is the name in a magazine or whatever. Yeah. Um, B-O-X. And, and um, the CEO of Twitter said that he will not um, will not uh, ban uh, Eric Jones. Much to the chagrin of, from what I, I'm just skim skimming through this thing, much to the chagrin of a lot of people on the left, yeah. that's that it's hate speech, and that um, he's at a, cro uh, at a crossroads and he's choosing the wrong path by not banning Eric Jones. And he says uh, the reason he's not is it doesn't violate any of Twitter's um, 
policies, and it's up to the news media, not Twitter staff, to police accounts like Jones that sensationalize issues and spread unsubstantial, uh, unsubstantiated. <laughs> Here's the point. Do you know who the ultimate censor should be? To begin with, I don't think anybody can define what hate speech is. I can define it for what I believe it to be. Jack can define it for what he believes it to be. But no one entity can define what hate speech is. It's kind of like, I'll know it when I hear it. Here's how hate speech should be dealt with. Nobody should listen to it. You have no. You don't have to go to Alex Jones's Facebook page. You don't have to go to his uh, his uh, iTunes account. Uh, you can avoid him completely. And if enough people avoid him, he will cease to exist. Yes, Jack. And the thing to remember is, there's always going to be somebody calling for the banning of somebody. Now, Alex Bennett and I are both old enough to remember when they used to ban books in some states. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, uh, pa yes, Phil. It uh, looks like the reason Jones was uh, tossed off is uh, he he's had a hand in spreading hoaxes online, unproven theories. Sandy Hook massacre was fabricated. Democrats ran a child abuse ring out of a pizzeria, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and um, th these are uh, the two main things that they're. Uh, he was also removed from Spotify. How about uh, how about all the people that's, that's out there? Uh, people out there on <laughs> Facebook pages that spread hope. Didn't all somebody the get time. killed at the pizzeria? No, no. almost, but no. Okay, but uh, so there was uh, an incited act. Yeah, of but violence. that happened. That happened like three years ago. Did well, this did is they what wait a minute? Saying. Wait a minute. Did they ban him then? No. But, okay, uh, then fuck this is, them. This is what they're saying. Fuck them. They're hypocrites. Uh, glorified violence using dehumanizing language uh, to describe people that are transgender, Muslims, and immigrants. Uh, and it violates their hate speech policies. <laughs> and after multiple strikes, yeah, Facebook but, uh, shut see, down. But the page. a hate pe speech policy is not hate speech policy. It is really it, it is a, um, uh, a, a it's a, a mind uh, crime. In other words, he, he has a certain thought, and he's saying it, and they don't agree with it, and they find it objectionable, and so they take it off. Well, that it flies in the face. I mean, Facebook's fallen apart. Facebook will be a whatever happened to Facebook within two years. I think they'll change their name to MySpace? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Um, in fact, I'm going to start buying up some of that MySpace stock, you know. <laughs> uh, oh boy. You know, maybe the way to approach all this is to consider these platforms sort of like an electronic version of the weekly world news where you know it's bullshit. Well, anybody, you know, anybody who looks at stuff online or anything on Facebook and takes it on face value is a fucking idiot. Hey. Oh. My girlfriend comes up to me tonight before the show, and she says, "Do you know that Chumley from uh, Porn Stars uh, yeah. uh, died?" And I said, "No, nah, that's bullshit." Uh, she says, "Well, my sister called me and told me." I said, "Where did she hear that?" I said, "You can't believe anything that's on the internet anymore. It's all bullshit." But it, then it, she looks, she looks it up, and it says Chumley's death hoax. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I'll bet you it's all over Facebook, and Facebook isn't doing anything about it because it comes against their anti-hoax policy. Yeah, really. You know, but, all I'm saying know. is I'm not defending Alex Jones. Far be it. I hope that he would die from lack of people paying attention to him. You okay? got a royal flush. Yeah. Uh, Who's got a toilet sound effect? Uh, I do. <laughs> yeah, so. don't don't encourage him. No, the no, sound no, 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 shit. I'm sorry. I'm Who sorry. is this uh, you're I'm talking about? Are you talking about Donald Trump or Alex seconds. Jones? I'm talking about Alex Jones. So the same is true, of, by the way, of Donald Trump. Uh, but uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, the fact I wish is, film the dying. That the reason Carter, Alex yeah, Jones exists is because there. people are paying attention to him. And you know something? He exists more today than when Facebook and iTunes and Spotify and so on took him off. And you know why? 
because people are now seeking him out. They never heard of this creep before now. And now they're hearing about Alex Jones, Alex Jones. It's the best thing that ever happened to Alex Jones. Yes, yes Patrick. I think that also happened to somebody who is now the president of the United States that he had very little media coverage and then people like Morning Joe and all these other people brought him on and all of a sudden his stock went up and everybody was interested in him. Who are you talking Same about? Same thing. Who are you talking about? I mean, about? You, you shine a spotlight <laughs> on you know, everybody's going to look. In the case of Alec Jones, you remove him from something, people seek him out. In the case of Trump, you put him on the platform where he was just a, a, a builder that, I mean, I didn't know much about Trump, and then all of a sudden he's on every fucking news show there was for almost two years after he declared, you know, he's going to run for president. So, you yeah, know, yeah, but, everybody see, sought him out. But it, Same it, way. You know, this is the best thing that has happened to Alex Jones. This is my wife calls it the uh, uh, the kitchen light syndrome. You go into the kitchen to turn the light on, and pretty soon all the cockroaches start scurrying. Right, right. You know, so I mean, I I just think station bathroom analogy would be. I just I I you know I'm not here to defend Alex Jones. Far be it. I mean, I wish the guy would. I wish he would have a heart attack and drop dead. Okay, how's that? All right? I Sounds wish... like hate speech. Yes, yeah, uh, it is hate <laughs> speech. I hate Alex Jones. Oh, wait a minute. This is going to be on Facebook later. I wonder if I'm going to be censored as a result of that. We'll have to monitor it to see if you are. Yeah. And mount a protest I, if I, you do drop I think I think that as long as you're making hate speech against a right winger, you are okay. Uh, uh, but I, I, I don't wish that he would be, by the way, hi, it's Steve. <laughs> I don't wish that um, Alex Jones would be dead. I just wish he would fucking disappear. Well, the best way for him to disappear is for people to, rege- to, die. to reject him. But the fact is, yes. in the last yes. couple of days, he's gotten more publicity than he's ever had. And he's going to be bigger now than he was before they took him off Facebook. You know, because he does have an app that's being, by the way, distributed for Apple iPhones and by Android just, for Android phones. And I just you, downloaded it. Yeah, and you can watch Alex Jones there. Isn't that just horrific that oh, Apple, God. who was the first people to take him off because they took him off of iTunes, still maintains his app? Now, how, the, how many followers does he have? He has about uh, about uh, well on Facebook he had two and a half million. Holy hmm. God! Wow. Yeah. But why? Why did you? I don't understand why anybody pays attention to that idiot. They pay attention to him because he's like a, you know people pay attention to uh, an accident by the side of the road. Right, you know, right. And he's the same as paying attention to an accident by the side of the road. Normally, you'd say, hey, somebody maybe died there. That's terrible. But no, you're going to look at it as you drive by. That's why the... That's the, why the, uh, the, 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 the lucky lose. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The lucky lose, yep. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. but, but yeah. It, it, he he's getting a lot of publicity now, and this is the best thing ever happened to him. And I don't know, did you have to pay to get that app, Phil? No, no, no. I wouldn't have paid for it. Are you kidding? Yeah. What's it called? <laughs> yeah. What's it called uh, it, it, uh, Info Wars. Yeah. Uh, the, I'm, best I'm look- way, the best way probably to look at all of this is to look at what Lincoln said. You can fool some of the people all of the time, some of the people some of the time. That's good enough. Well, you can fool some of the people some of the time, some but not the all time. of the people all the time. But if you can do it just once, every, hey. every, every four years you can get elected. <laughs> I gotta uh, go. I, I, yeah. I'm not sure okay. we'll that see you later this is on his, your but show. on By Facebook, the way, this is Alex Jones Infowars uh, Facebook page. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hillary. So quit plugging him. Right up. Quit plugging him. <laughs> well, it, it, it yeah. comes up. Really? Yeah, you know, it, it doesn't look like it's taken down. Maybe it's more fake news. No, it's not That's taken it. down. The <laughs> app is there. 
And that, that's the hypocrisy of iTunes. They were the first ones to take him off. They were then followed in suit by uh, this whole cadre of social media. This, this is Facebook. And it's oh, there. Oh, that's Facebook? What is, yeah. What's there? Uh, 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 Infowars.com TV show. <laughs> and I understood that that was taken down as well as his personal page. Wait a minute. Is it is it a Facebook page called Infowars.com? In Infowars.com TV show. Uh, and, oh, wait a minute. This is a scam. There's only 1,799 people like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Ah, uh, I bet you this is a scam. Yeah, and that's a little scam that's, that Facebook didn't take care of. And what are they going to do about all the hookers that keep trying to be my friend on Facebook? You know, <laughs> I how do, at, least, at least somebody wants they, to be. Are your they friend. doing anything to stop that? Yeah. Uh, I uh, have, I have. Historically, I have how many? Uh, I have 5,000 Facebook followers, the most that you can have. And every time it goes down to 4,999, I get a hooker from Guatemala, you know, or a hooker from Abu Dhabi or someplace like that who wants to be my friend. Now I'm, what, I'm getting the hookers on uh, Skype. They, they, they try to friend you on Skype. Yeah, I had that so, happen once. So what, what is what is what is uh, what is uh, Facebook doing about that? They're not protecting me in that fashion, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And I find no, that well, very annoying. I, I hey, always Alex, list. Here's it. your answer. Here's your answer as to what they're doing. It's called Jack and shit. Dick and, or shit or shit or that too. I, I hear all of Jack these too. all of these sites have only like a thousand or two thousand members. Yeah, so, so they're all scams. They're all scams. Yeah, but uh, but what, so why isn't Facebook closing down those scams? I mean, come on, we're trying to fight the wars, aren't we? Facebook, we're trying to show the world that we're going to get rid of you know. Ray, say something. <laughs> well, I you know I I just think that uh, I have a couple ideas. I mean, first of all, I agree that Facebook should not pick and choose, and I'm glad that Twitter didn't. On the other hand, I feel like what you said, Alex, it, the public should just not pay attention to people, and Facebook's a private company that we don't pay anything for, so it, it's, in some sense, they can do whatever the hell they want. Well, we don't, exactly. we don't pay for it, but Ray, let me say this. We don't pay for it because they choose not to charge us for it. Yeah. Because they want all that data that they mine from our existence of being on it. Yeah, I know. I won't. I okay. won't use it. So and in a way, large enough so where they should have to be held responsible. So in a way, in a, in a way, Ray, aren't we? In fact, what what the was that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, but what what about <laughs> the thing that you agree to when you sign up for the app that says that you agree to their rules and and regulations? Oh, wait, you know, there's there's a there's a thing on there when you when you make your profile, uh, it says, "I agree uh, to these uh, you know these well, things." By the way, uh, uh, Brian, we don't have any video on you. There we go. Uh, yes, pa Patrick. Yeah, it, it, stop with that with those rules and regulations. They make them up every day. Okay. Doesn't matter. We agreed to them. Well, it, fuck them. They they've been using my data all these years for their enrichment. Well, they didn't. Hey, Phil, they didn't flash a notifier on my screen window or something indicating that these changes and these addendum these addendum items are added into our this our disclosure agreement that we sent. I don't even. Two thousand seven. what if originally joined? What if they don't? Fucking Ryan, but. So what if they the don't fuck? have to because it says that it may change from well, time to then time? Well, then we can also have the right to say, fuck you, Facebook, which I'm right. thinking. Well, that's, I'm that's thinking, what I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Well, that was uh, my point. But I understand the point that they're a huge company and they have a huge influence on our country, obviously, and our elections and everything else. So they, they do need to be held responsible. Exactly. I'm just saying that. Patrick had week. his hand up a long time ago, and I, I would like to recognize him at this time. Patrick? Um, I would like to agree with Phil that if people that we signed up, we agreed to these rules, then that is absolutely correct. My question is, though, at what point did they decide 
they were all of a sudden going to start enforcing them. Because it's just like other laws or regulations in a business, you don't just willy-nilly decide one day you're going to do it. They should have been enforcing that shit. Yet, so if that was as soon as you signed up and Alex Jones started being the knob that he is from day one, he shouldn't be having a Facebook page for the last... I'm ten years. You know all so the reason, all this all this stuff that Alex Jones has been doing. Uh, he's been doing for the last yeah. ten years, right? right? And 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 most of the most egregious stuff, like the stuff about uh, the schools in Connecticut Sandy and so Sandy Hook and so on, happened as much as four or five years ago. And and uh, so all the stuff they're complaining about, they're taking him off for now. Isn't it odd that it's happening no. at the time? Hold on a second. Isn't it odd that it's happening at the time that their stock completely tumbled, plummeted? Which brings and, me well, back to my point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So well, I think okay. that with Congress uh, grilling Zuckerberg, that started uh, the enforcement of the rules. Now he realized that he was going to have to do something. He apologized. He said that they didn't do enough. And now they're doing something. And then something. he made up a phony story about 31 people he took off because they might have been Russians. They might. I think those were all the Gabnet uh, yeah, uh, listeners yeah, yeah, on YouTube. They might have been. They might have been. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> now, now what um, Kevin said earlier made sense with the, uh, with the stock. I wasn't buying it when, when it was just... The Russian, but now that you tied the stock in there, and uh, money, that money, money, money. Yeah, that not. Now I can sort of buy it. But like I said earlier, um, and like you just said, Alex, he's been doing this for the last five years or, or ten years on Facebook. Why now? Well, exactly. maybe it is. Maybe it is the money. Maybe it is the the stock. The only way to money keep these to guys look good. The only way to keep these guys from inf influencing the next election is to say you shouldn't have any political speech on Facebook. If there's political speech, it should be banned. Well, but wasn't it then you're going to have to ban about 90% of the people who post something of a political yeah. nature on you know just from on their site that they got somewhere else, you know. Yes, yeah. Ray. Wasn't it the video of him harassing Bernie Sanders in the airport that kind of was the last the nail in the coffin for him? I don't even know about that. Oh yeah, I you remember can, seeing that. Oh yeah, it just happened recently. <laughs> he, um, he happened to run into Bernie Sanders at an airport and was harassing the shit out of Bernie. It Sanders. was one of his like yeah. underlings, though. Uh, Joe no, was he was harassing. I can't believe what? that Bernie's flying commercial. Yeah, they were. No, 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 no. <laughs> Alex Jones was chasing Bernie Sanders around with an iPhone, and uh, uh, it was kind of scary. Um, yeah. And I, I believe that's what that was the thing that initiated the banning. Yes, Patrick. Wow. See if you can find it. It's terrible. <laughs> can I just say to that, um, Bernie Sanders is a public official, and I remember on this show, uh, many people, <laughs> people yammering about Sarah Sanders or yeah. Al. Standing up and calling out uh, what's his face, how many um, uh, the uh, old Secretary of State, um, um, uh, Pompeo, or oh, you no, know, oh. back back during Vietnam, I, I it named that tip of my tongue. Um, who you yelled at, Alex? Uh, uh, Henry you Kissinger. Oh, Henry Henry Kissinger. Yeah, Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger. Yeah. So my point is. Um, I don't give a shit that Alec Jones was following what was scary or not, because according to everybody on this panel, it was just fine to hammer on Sarah Sanders and hammer on Kissinger. Oh, Pence. Hammer on anybody. No, no, no. Well, yeah, I thought watch, the, the, watch the video first. And then I they, thought the Sanders crew, though, at Ray, handled themselves well in rebuking Alex Jones. I thought they I, I, I agree. They stopped defending themselves, though. Well, but, I but I think there is a help. point to be made here that these are public servants who... And Patrick uh, is right. I agree with him. Wait. You know. 
Uh, look at Bernie Sanders is an old man. Alex Jones was like trying to get in his face. I mean, it was. I. I well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold scary. on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. The two two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen got in his face on that but show. That was on a TV. That was. Uh, but this no. This was in an airport was a in public. You need to watch the video. Uh, yeah. I mean, just watch the hey, video, and then you'll know. Hey, what I mean. there was a crowd that followed Sarah Sanders from a restaurant to another I, restaurant. Well, that's getting in too. her face. No, I think that's terrible. I, no, I, I disagree with you, Ray. I don't think these people should go anywhere without knowing that people don't like them. <laughs> to be honest, no, but with there, there's a time and a place. Physically threatened. I, I just don't. Yeah, that. There, there's a time and a place. Well, she felt threatened. She it, there's no proof that she was threatened. Okay. Well, Ooh, if I were Bernie sense. Sanders and I was his age, and I would have felt threatened. Uh, if you yeah. see this video, I certainly would have. Felt Look, threatened. Uh, you know, uh, and 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 the reason I haven't seen that video is I don't watch Alex Jones. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know where it came from. I don't think it was Alex Jones who promoted the video. I think. Um, I don't, I'm not sure. Was this somebody? This was just somebody with an iPhone who accosted. No, it was. Uh, no, it was Alex's iPhone. <laughs> I guess he did put it out there. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. Well, Sarah Sanders had a kid. With I mean, how scary was that for the kid to be? You know, yeah. It's all the same fucking thing. I, I, I don't give a shit anymore. I, agree. Uh, I did at the time, but now. I mean, Alex made the point weeks ago, and it made sense to me. If you're in the public eye and you're a public servant, tough fucking shit. If you're up there, I mean, if Alex is yeah. yeah. I got the what? video. Well, 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 who cares? I mean, we're not going to well, show it here. No, it says Alex Jones ambushes Senator Bernie Sanders. Okay, at well, we can all go online and do that, I think, after it's on the YouTube. show if we want to see it. You know. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean... Look, nobody is questioning whether this guy isn't a major asshole and creep and that what he's doing is wrong and it's not nice and it's not nice to do to other people. We all realize the creepy level to which this guy goes in order to make whatever point he's trying to make. He's actually trying to sell, I think, vitality pills on his show and that's it, you know. Uh, uh, but, but what we're talking about here is his access to what is social media, which is an open forum, being shut down because these companies are watching out for their own collective asses. Not because they, you know, if they felt this way about Alex Jones, he was this way two, three years ago. Okay, most of the stuff they're shutting him down for is stuff he did two or three years ago. Where were they then? That's what I'm saying. It's a fucking hypocritical. Facebook, especially, is incredibly hypocritical, and they, I think were, Apple follows right behind. They were dealing with the Me Too movement, and now after they got all of these guys from 25 years ago, they're going after Alex Jones. That's only three years. Well, wait a minute. That has nothing to do with the Me Too movement. No, no, no. It does. It has, no, know, it doesn't. What it, it has is absolutely is... nothing to do with the Me Too movement. That has spawned a whole different kind of Nazism in this country. <laughs> right. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Um, actually, um, Bill may have a point in that if now. Everybody going back in time, whether it's old Twitter account that said something five years ago when you were in, in high school and now it's being brought up. Or, and the guy loses his job. Yeah, it, it, it's shit like that. And all of a sudden we're reaching back into time and, mm. you know, we're trying to write it now in today's <laughs> versus back then. I mean, Alex Jones was an asshole back then. He's he is now. He is now. Why not? Right. Uh, didn't, uh, so didn't Alex hold on Bennett a second. say hold Paul on a McCartney second. is dead? Oh, no, I didn't. I never said it. <laughs> what are all these weird noises? I, I think it's uh, it's uh, sounds Tony. like Brian has a cold. Yeah. Oh. No, that was it's me. like someone's like hacking up luggies. Oh. Last <laughs> <or something. laughs> Lung butter. Jesus. Uh, 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 <laughs> 
Scott, Tony lives on a racetrack. Scott has yeah, hardly right said now. anything. <laughs> Scott, Scott has said hardly anything tonight. Do you have anything to say? Okay, he just nodded no. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, all I'm saying is, is that these companies, uh, you know, they started out as uh, as fun, okay, and yeah. now all of a sudden they, you know, what it was is when when Facebook first started, and I think I was maybe one of the early people on Facebook who wasn't a college student, because it started as a thing for college students. Uh, it uh, it was fun, you know, and everybody was having a nice time, and there wasn't any advertising on it. And uh, uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name now. The head of the company, Zucker. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg was still trying Zucker. to figure out a way to make money out of it, so he went out and hired some guys to come in and run it as a business, and they found the way to make money out of it. Not the least of which was mining your data. And I thought he hired the Napster guy. I, I can't remember who he hired, to tell you the truth. Yeah, it was the guy that uh, had Napster, and then got uh, that was destroyed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I stole a lot of music. <laughs> Napster. Um, yeah. I mean, um, I borrowed um, um Yeah, well, actually, they uh, actually Netscape was going to combine with Yahoo at one point to a new company called Net and Yahoo. <laughs> so, uh, oh, oh. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Um, uh, you know, I just, I just think that these companies have gotten terribly hypocritical. Uh, I, as you know, took my show off of Facebook, and many times have considered not even rerunning it on Facebook uh, because I just don't like Facebook. I don't like what they become. You know, and I think they've gotten away from their own original stated mission. And I think this thing with Alex Jones is just, you know, it's a symptom of what's wrong with Facebook. And was it, it Tom it, Hanks that sold all his stock about a month before Facebook went in the dumper? I think so, yeah. And, and he said that he didn't like uh, what was going on and uh, he pulled out of it? Yeah, yeah. Smart guy. Yeah, so, you know, I mean. Inside trade. Yeah, yeah inside, <laughs> inside. He's a libtard, though. Inside trading, yeah, and he's not yeah. even a congressman. Uh, you know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, gee, we you know we we spent the whole night, except for a glancing reference every now and then to Trump, not even talking about Trump, and that is certainly a great relief, even mm. if it was the, the expense was having to talk about Alex Jones. So you know. Um, and I was right several times. <laughs> when was that? I can't remember. On the Farrakhan thing. Oh, on the Farrakhan. He <laughs> Almost two. You should friend him on Facebook. Well, I heard from Farrakhan personally that he doesn't hate Jews. So, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. I, I think he was licking his chops. Are you Jewish? <laughs> I'll tell you. I like the guy. I had a great interview. Yeah. I, had a, I had a great moment with him. He was uh, yeah. very interesting. Yes, Patrick. You'll be our last I word tonight. Anybody to go online and watch some of his speeches. Even if you disagree with him, uh, he's very captivating, much like uh, Bill Clinton was. Uh, Adolf Hitler. I mean, uh, it, it, I, Bill, I don't like him any more than you do. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't equate. To me, that's like the idiots that are equating Trump to Hitler. It's an overuse of the fucking term. And it's, just, it's a stupid term to use, Hitler this, Hitler that. No, Farrakhan, they were both anti-Semitic. No, listen, I, I agree with him. For instance, Trump is no Hitler. Hitler was much nicer. Anyway, uh, 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 that's it for tonight. Do you hear that? Do you hear the theme, everybody? I guess you can't hear it. Can you hear the theme? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can't. Hear it, man. Oh, okay. So I'm dancing. No, that's why you're dancing. Hey, good to see you again tonight, Ray. Uh, let me thank yeah. Phil, as always. We always like to get heated with him, but we love him dearly. Jeff, you didn't got much of a word in edgewise tonight, but always nice to see you in one of the squares. Uh, uh, Patrick, we think the world of you. Make sure your, your audio isn't on automatic, okay, on Skype when you get off, because it tends to, when other people are talking, you tend to get drowned out. But I and just check it. The hell of it. Hey, uh, uh, we hardly heard at all from uh, uh, from uh, 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 Tony. Tony, 
Uh, but thank you, Tony. Steve, we hardly You're heard from you, and, but thank you for calling. Scott, Ray Renati, of course, right Brian on. Ludwig. Always, always great to have Good you. Good night. Here. Thank you. And of course, to Kevin, if everybody would like to give a big wave goodbye, uh, I'm sure they will wave back at you, okay? Thank you all for joining us tonight. That's our Citizens Panel. That's it for tonight. Coming up next, Jack Bishop. He's here with a little program called The Intersection. And then at 1 o'clock this morning, it's Connections. And tomorrow night at 9.30, uh, we will be having a, uh, a program with uh, Damian Chaplin called The Exchange. I'm back again tomorrow night. Yes, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, please tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>